race war. All my life I've been in the middle of a race war. So it would have been a, would have been a waste of time having people killed to stop on them, wouldn't it? People killed, what people killed? The so Jews killed in the uh, Nuremberg, or the Germans killed for, for you know, I mean, yeah. we're we going to put a hat on this monkey, man. So let's just get it straight in black and white. These people weren't killed to bring on Elder Skelter on your command. Is that right? You didn't send them there to kill these people or any people to start a race war. I've been through it quite a bit. There's a whole uh, lot that could be explained if I could get to a position where I could explain it. Where I could get to a tape recorder or I could write a book or get someone to help me write a book or get it in perspective to where I could offer it to you to where it could be understandable. You, uh, you lay something on me that comes from the way you think and then you expect me to give you an answer towards that which it doesn't, it doesn't mesh within my reality as being the same as what you think is real. And then what you offer into the public's mind to analyze and justify whatever you push it around to create it with uh, is going to be something altogether in another perspective which I imagine you'll do for the money more than the a issue at hand. The issue at hand is really the time is already done. Uh, uh, the people that have done the time have already got old and uh, everything has moved on. Uh, reality is created by the courtroom whether I want it to be reality or not. This attorney is responsible for Helter Skelter. The district attorney created Helter Skelter. I didn't create Helter Skelter. I wouldn't say the Beatles created Help the Skelter. They made a song about a slip and slide. You know, in other words, like, interpretation falls down through the minds of the mass, and by the time it gets to the subculture, it could be, uh, God will love us that said. In other words, like, uh, where do you vortex this insanity, man? How does it come to Monty Python again, you know? In other words, like, uh, I can't say, man. Uh, directly, positively, uh, uh, assuredly, solidly about anything outside a court of law. Give me a court of law, give me my rights in a court of law, give me a floor to stand on amongst minds that can understand what I'm saying and to the point of reality that I could bring into existence, rather than ask me to subsidize and capitalize and run a lot of them down and have them make up something for your benefit to entertain someone. You know, this issue that I'm stuck in is deeper than entertainment. I am not an entertainer. I am not an actor. I'm a gangster. I'm an outlaw, a thug, and a criminal. I'm a pirate. I'm all those things that are bad. And I never pretended to be anything other than that. I said this, and I said, and until eternity ends, I did not break the law. I'm an intelligent being. I know what the law is. I know how the law works. And they used to tell me when I was a child, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So I say to this to all you helpless skeletalites who keep play acting on the district attorney's reality, that's your helpless skelter. That reality you can thank the district attorney for. And when you spend your last days in that confusion, you did, you can believe that he sold your last chance for survival on this planet because it didn't have anything to do with the movement that I was in. The well, movement I was in was a rebirth movement that was coming off the top of 22 years of prison from Jibault Wallace Flanagan Boys School in Omaha, Nebraska, in the heart of the wheat, in the grain and the cornfields of, of Iowa. It comes from Moorhead, Kentucky, in the mountains of Tennessee. It comes from my grandmother who said that if these mountains die, there's going to be no life left in the flatland. I'm a hillbilly, man. I'm not a city man. And there's a big difference between a high man and a low people, you know. I think Scotland's got a high land and a low land, don't you? That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to other things. I mean, after you came into prison, uh, some of your friends made contact with, say, Mel Lyman. Do you remember him? Mel Lyman. I heard of him. Do you know anything about him? Uh, there's a lot of trash in the camp. 
you would understand. You wouldn't say you were a supporter of him? Uh, Mel Wyman, uh, uh, what is he? Uh, uh, he's a leader of something? Well, they said he was leading another family and he... And you are. Not a job you'd give to anyone, then. Huh? Not a job you'd give to anyone. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. Mm. I wouldn't recommend it. And, and uh, the word you use, friend, that's a very uh, loose term. That's a, that's a very hard word to understand and much harder to earn. I haven't really seen too much of that. There's some things that you've said and some things that your friends, whatever you want to call them, have said which are your ideas, which a lot of people don't understand. Like, what do you think of black people? Uh, you know what I think about? Yeah. I don't think. A lot of people say you're a racist, is that true? Uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm a racist. Are we all? Aren't you? Tell me. Who are you for? Well, I'm for the truth. You're for yourself. You're breaking all people down. Who, who you got? There's only one you, that's all you got. You gotta be for that. If you're not for you, who else is? Is anyone else for you? Is anyone gonna feed you? Who's got to feed you? Who's got to look out for you? So you must be a racist. You're for yourself. You know, come on, man, racist. You know what a racist is? It's a, it's a game that people play in the streets. Hey, hey, you defensive game. You, you don't like me? You think I'm ugly? You hate me? Okay, Mike, let me, let me, uh, let me get a couple bucks from you. I get upset, and I might just decide to just bust you up. You uh, wouldn't mind helping a man with a pint of wine, would you? And would you see me in the street? I, I play up over you, like catching your fear in you, you dig? And I said, well, get in your pocket and give me a couple quid, man. Come on, man, like, you know, like, help me out. You don't want to help me? And a little fear, and then a little kindness, a little fear, a little kindness. You're a racist? No racist? I don't think so. Yeah, uh, whatever. What is a racist guy? You don't even know what it is. It's not in the dictionary. It's not even an English word, man. It's a game that you play on the street corner. Well, let's talk about a universal order. They use your name. Yeah, I started that. Yeah. Yeah. They don't like black people. Uh, do you? Yeah, I've got kind of no problem with black people. Oh. Mm. They don't like Jews. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Have you got a problem with Jews? Uh. <laughs> Yeah, see, you know, well, how long can we get into that? Man? You know, like, we bite off into that, man. We can be chewing here all night. You take the simple thing, I'll run to you this way, man. I know. K-N-O-W-I-N-G, I know. You can't fake on me. Don't play that weak ass like you love somebody shit to me, mister. When you're hungry and there's one loaf of bread, I'm going to get it, and I'm going to eat it. And if you starve, I'm a racist or anything else you want to call me, but I'm going to survive. That's the way it's always been, and that's the way it'll always be. The strong survive, guy. Fall up underneath that bullshit game of knuckling down to somebody else's fear, wearing white hats, and playing games with other people's games. That's not going to work. That only works for someone else's game. Here's what it boils down to. Britain made one mistake. They backed up. They should have took the world when they had it. When you're backed up, now you've got no chance to take it. You go over and educate those Africans and give them guns. And then what did you have to do with the Mau Mau? You had to go over there and fight them. In other words, why are you teaching those people to be just like you? And I say, I hate you first. You're the first line I hate. I hate all white people. White people are rotten. Black people are just like them. Because you've made them just exactly like you. They walk like you, they talk like you, everything they do is like you. They want to be you so much. They love your woman more than you do. They know your mind better than you. They wear your clothes. They didn't even learn to wear your shoes. You take them out of the jungle and you want to make them into a man. Why couldn't they be left to be God? Why do you want to make them into a man? In the jungle, they were gods. But some guy, some guy came along in prison and tried to kill you because he didn't think you were, you were racist enough. Isn't that true? Kill me racist enough? What does that mean? Because I wouldn't accept some Hindu as, as God. So my I'm father in heaven is my father in heaven, man. Just like every man's father in heaven is his father in heaven, man. 
Somewhat about rap poison, I guess.